All right, so this is gonna be my very first time tiling on my CNC. Um, I got a request to do a full-size Santa sleigh. I'm using JBait's free files, and I'll link to that in the description. Uh, I watched a couple of videos on how to do tiling with a full sheet of plywood, and what I came up with was putting on a fence on one side of the CNC so that you can guide the uh, full sheet all the way down. And then basically marking where you set zero um, and marking at four feet up the plywood. So basically you let it do its carve here and then you slide that four foot mark where you marked zero at on the fence and then you let it go. Uh, do the second half. So one of the problems I'm coming up with at this moment before I start is that the plywood is not perfectly flat. Um, it looks to be concaved here and it's convexed this way because it's hanging off. Um, I do have some stands that I'm going to put on either side, but I want to make sure this thing doesn't move. So I need to screw down this piece of plywood. One of the things that I was thinking about was putting in these screw holes into the program, letting the CNC show me where those are at. So I know that I'm not going to hit it. Uh, and then screwing them down. So the plywood is nice and flat and when it does its carve, I'll miss the, the screws. It's nerve wracking to think that I'm going to possibly screw up a $60 piece of plywood, but, um, you only grow when you take chances, right? So, so for my fence, I have a straight piece of aluminum channel. And what I did was I ran the gantry all the way over to the left side, brought it all the way forward as far as it would go. And I put a, uh, a small eighth inch drill bit into the router and I drilled all the way into the wasteboard here. And I did the same thing all the way at that end. I moved it as far back as it would go, all the way to the left and I drilled straight down. And what that did was gave me a reference point of where the bit would be at the absolute closest to there. So then I ended up covering all but the very edge of that hole. And then I screwed the, um, the channel in on this end, on that end, and then two other places in between. So now I have marked where uh, the very front of that is, and that's where I'm going to put my plywood, move it all the way up to there. And then I mark the plywood at four feet so that when I move it down, the four foot mark on the plywood will meet here. And in theory, I will be able to do my second tile. So here I'm spending an awful lot of time trying to get this seat position perfect. Now for the eighth inch bit, the accuracy is necessary, making sure you know where the, the bit's going, especially in between some of those tighter spaces. But for the quarter inch bit, if I just use the machine's limits all the way left and down, instead of trying to perfect the location of the bit, right? Like putting the very center of the bit on the very corner of the plywood that's usually like damaged in some way. Um, I would have saved a lot of time, especially when I missed steps and I had to start over again. That was a lot of stress that could have been bypassed if I just used the machine's limits. Um, then all I would have had to, to care about was the height, the, the Z zero. So I didn't record the second half of this carve, the prep for it. I didn't show the taking the old screws out prior to sliding the board and doing the drilling the holes and putting the new screws in. Um, 
what do you mean? I did those things and I recommend you doing them as well. The biggest thing when tiling is making sure that your marks on the plywood are money, right? So for me, it was at 48 inches, um, putting that on the exact spot marked on the, the guide, the fence that I made. If that's not correct, then you will not, uh, your design will not actually connect. Next up, I'm gonna walk you through all the programming side of how I put the screw holes in there and set up the tiling. All right, so here in VCarve, I am on my last sheet. All I'm going to do is copy what's there. Control copy, I highlight everything. Control C, I come down to the bottom Hit new layer, screw holes five, because that's what sheet I am on. Too many spaces, all right. And get rid of that. So now this is my new sheet. I click on the sheet, control V, pops up what I just copied. I run up to design, circle, I'm using a eighth inch drill bit and then I will come over here and zoom in just a little bit and I want to put one here as well as here here and below that one I'll just squeeze down here do the same thing on here 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 there all right let's zoom back out so now I have holes here that will keep the plywood down and in place when cutting. If I exit out of this, I'll show you I did that for every sheet or every layer. So the originals up top. Right, look like that. Well, I did the same, but now I have little holes everywhere. And the only thing that I really needed to pay attention to, which I don't think I did a great job on this one, this should move. I should move that up and out of the way. But right here, um, 50, 49, 48. So this is, this one should move down. This is where the, the tiling is going to split. So right here at the 48 mark, I don't want any screws. And these are just to hold it down. Um, everything has tabs already. So now I'll look through the next set. Again at 48. That one looks good. Look at this one. And this one was easy. It split there. And this last one, one, two, it's split right here. So that's fine. All right, well now it's done, I get to select all these. I'll just go through the rest of the sheets and do the same thing. I'm just holding shift when I highlight everything. I hit delete. So now the only thing that's left are the holes that I'll be drilling. And the one more step that I have to do after all this is tile these individual sheets. Now I have all my screw holes down here and then all the sheets up here 
screw holes, regular drawings, and I have them saved individually over here. So the quarter inch end mill and quarter or eighth inch end mill. Uh, I put it in mill. I'm actually going to use a drill bit and use the drilling tool path here. So I'll use a regular drill bit for that, make it a little bit faster. And if you just click all of them, it creates a gigantic mess on the screen, but it's all the tool paths. You go to tile tool paths. Okay, so it's slightly frustrating, but I didn't notice until in editing that uh, this machine, this pop up here for the uh, tool path manager didn't actually show when I was doing a screen record. Not really sure what's up with that, but the tile tool paths here needs to be checked when it pops up for the first time, it's unchecked. So you check it, you want it in the feed through Y, uh, which is up and down with the point the zero going to be right here, depending on your settings, I guess, and how you set it up. But the big deal is that this box is checked. We're in Y, which is the direction I want to go. Uh, tiling height is 48 inches because I'm using a four foot C CNC four by four, but say like I was only maybe I'm four feet wide, but I'm only two feet deep. I'll do 20, 24 inches, click update tiles. And it's hard to see because everything's on the screen, but now you have these yellow lines right here that segregate everything. And there's now four tiles instead of two. Uh, I am going to put this back into 48 so that I don't mess up any settings on my machine. Once you're satisfied, hide it. Now it knows literally everything. So then I'll untag all of them. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and do the one in one eighth inch holes. All right, save. It's going to be make sure this tiled uh, output tiled toolpath is there. It's the correct size bit. It's going to the right spot. Save toolpath. Make sure that you are in the correct folder, and then I would save them you know, right here, um, however you want it, right? So here I had it saved as this, but then uh, sheet one was added. When I saved it, it becomes T1 for the first tile. And then down here is T2 for the second tile, same name. All right, so now I'll uncheck the eighth inch and I'll check the pocket, the profile, and the holes. I added the pocket uh, since I've recorded that screen share. Um, and that is for this tiny triangle here and this circle here. They both popped out and luckily didn't jam up my machine. Um, but using a pocket profile here will just make it so that there's nothing that falls out and could ruin your carve. Um, so I'll have these three, they all use the same bit. Save the toolpath, I'll put tiled toolpaths is checked, it's going to the right spot. Hit save, again, go to the correct folder. And then these ones will be saved as, um, you know, I, I saved it as holes and profile sheet one with the, the bit number that I'm using here. This is the Amana tools bit number. So it's T1, the bit that I need, holes and profile for sheet one. And if you scroll down, T2 for the tile two, the bit number, holes and profile, sheet one. As always, if you found value in this video, please like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't seen the build of this, Santa Slay, please check out the video right here.